This is Mr. Holsey of 8 Squared Sufficiently Understood Science, and today we're going to be talking about kinetic and potential energy. So, first off, what is energy? Well, energy is the ability to do work. Everything that happens in the world uses energy, anything we do. Right now, I'm using energy to create this video. Uh, most of the time, we can't see energy, but it's everywhere around us at all times. Now, it's important to remember so, uh, that energy is never created or destroyed and it can only be stored or transferred. Um, this is the law of conservation of energy. So it can never be created or destroyed. It only transfers, such as you know, electricity being turned into heat or um, the so thermal energy of the sun uh, being transferred. So it is something that cannot be created or destroyed. It simply is going to transfer or store. Now all energy is going to be divided into two forms, either potential energy or kinetic energy. And that's going to be the main topic of our discussion today. So potential energy is the energy stored in an object as the potential to do something. So it simply means it has the ability to do something. So potential energy does not signify movement. It's the possibility of movement. And we can even subdivide this into two further forms of energy. Uh, we can have gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy. So here are some examples of potential energy. We have a drawn bow and arrow. And so this is an example of elastic potential energy uh, because of the bow string right here is being pulled backwards and is creating a potential energy to shoot the arrow forwards. So it's creating that potential energy in an elastic form. Then we have a yo-yo that's in your hand and very specific on the example here because it's in your hand which means you're more than likely about to drop it and so this would actually make this a gravitational potential energy because it has energy since it's lifted up from the ground we're not stretching anything or compressing anything like a spring then you have a stretched rubber band, one of the best examples of elastic potential energy. Uh, if you've ever done that to a, someone, you know, that or had someone shoot you with a rubber band, you know it hurts. Uh, it does have a lot of energy behind it. And then we have the water at the edge of a waterfall. And I'm talking very specifically at the edge of the waterfall, not falling off yet right there at the very, very edge, right before falling off. And so this would be an example of gravitational potential energy. Now, there are some factors that are going to affect potential energy. The higher the object, the more potential energy it's going to have. And the more mass an object has, the more potential energy it's going to have as well. So let's use this as an example. So the more mass an object has, the more potential energy it has. So we have two objects here. We have a feather and a brick. So based on this, the brick is going to have the most potential energy because it has a larger mass, it has more mass than the feather. And the height is going to have a good, uh, have a big impact as well. So it will change its potential energy. So for example, if I wanted to drop an apple from the top of one of these three things, where will the most potential energy be? So we have a chair, a crane, and a skyscraper. And 
as I increase in height, as I increase in height, that potential energy is going to increase as well. And so the most potential energy is obviously going to be from the skyscraper. It's going to fall, have more time to fall, has, and so it will have a greater potential energy. So when potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy is when stored energy begins to move. The object now transfers that potential energy into kinetic energy. Kind of like this, potential, kinetic. So kinetic energy is the energy of a moving object like a car. So kinetic literally means movement, uh, kind of like the kinetic dance company they have over at a few of the high schools. So when stored energy is being used up, uh, it is making things move or happen. So whenever you're, even if you're resting, kinetic processes are going on because your body is pumping blood, is breathing air, so on and so forth. So examples of kinetic energy, skiing, running, uh, movement of an object, slipping and falling in on your on your hind quarters. Those are all examples of kinetic energy. Now some factors affecting kinetic energy are the faster the object moves, the more kinetic energy is produced. So the greater mass and speed of an object, the more kinetic energy there will be. So the more mass and velocity an object has, the more energy that is going to have. So if we're looking at these two objects, a semi truck and a smart car, um, if they're both traveling at 60 miles per hour, um, the truck would have more kinetic energy than that smart car, hands down, just hands down. Um, it has much more mass, it has much more mass, therefore has more kinetic energy. And there's kind of this inverse relationship um, between potential and kinetic energy because the more an object has the, the object has the most kinetic energy when its movement is the greatest so kind of linking kinetic and movement and when an object has the least potential energy it has the most kinetic energy so as one goes up, the other has to go down. There's a really good example of this in roller coasters. Now roller coasters have the most potential energy at the very, very top. The higher the train is lifted by the motor, the more potential energy is produced. So the bigger the hill, uh, the more and, and the further drop, the more potential energy it has, the higher up it can go. And at the top of the hill, the train has a huge amount of potential, but very, very, very little kinetic until it goes over that, that little hill. Now, as the train accelerates down this hill, okay, as it's going down this hill, that potential energy is going to change. Into kinetic energy. Okay. So there will be very little uh, potential energy. I'm going to actually make kinetic energy a little, really little right there. I'll make potential energy really little right there. So as one gets bigger, the other gets smaller. Now, let's take a look at this one. What about a loop? So when does the train on this roller coaster have the most kinetic energy? Well, you can easily point out two points right before it begins to slow down about right here. 
and whenever it is coming out of the loop about right there has the most kinetic energy it's at its highest speed now when does the roller coaster have the most potential energy it is right about here when it's slowed down to its maximum it's right about to fall back down on the rails that's when it's at its most potential and this whole time right here going up all that is doing is building potential okay all that is doing is building potential and then as it comes down right here all that's doing is building kinetic so just to give a quick little recap so all energy is divided into two types potential and kinetic Potential energy is the energy stored in an object. Kinetic energy is the energy of a moving object. And energy is never created or destroyed. It is always stored or transferred. This has been Mr. Holsey for uh, Sufficiently Understood Science. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time.